I would say, especially if you watch it, you're gonna probably say the same thing, that it's almost certain that interest rates will go higher from here on out. Hello everyone, today our guest, Brian Kim, a popular YouTuber, seasoned financial analyst and investor, who in this video analyzes the Fed's latest rate pause, its effects, the future hikes, inflation and recession issues, in detail with some astounding facts. So, if you're ready to navigate the exciting world of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks, hit that subscribe button now. Join us on this exhilarating adventure towards financial growth and success. Don't miss out. Subscribe, like, and share today. On June 14, the Fed opted to leave interest rates unchanged at 5.25% for the first time since February 2022, following 10 consecutive prior increases. The so-called pause comes after U.S. inflation was down to 4% for May 2023 from its peak of 9.1% in June 2022. The consecutive rate hikes spanning over the past 15 months were imposed to combat the highest level of inflation in the U.S. for 40 years and bring down inflation to its annual target of 2%. Factors that may have influenced the Fed's decision to pause can be traced to the failures of three U.S. banks, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and First Republic Bank, this year and uncertainty around a substantial slowdown in the U.S. housing market due to the rapid pace of mortgage rate increases. The theme of inflation versus interest rates in the U.S. has dominated the macroeconomic agenda since the Fed began its rate hike in February 2022, the fastest rate hike in recent U.S. history. Whilst there was a unanimous decision to pause on the interest rate at this point in time, there is still indecision on whether the June 14 announcement is the peak as the Fed indicated that it would raise interest rates another two times by 0.25% each before the end of 2023, bringing interest rates to 5.75%. Investors anticipate a 74.4% probability of the Fed hiking rates by a quarter point at its July 25-26 to meeting, according to the CME FedWatch tool. And I want you to know that there's a fight going on between the bulls and the bears. So the bulls are making the argument that the stock market has gone up 20% from its bottom. Therefore, the bull market, so a new bull market, has started. The bears are saying that that wasn't the bottom. The economy is going to get worse and the stock market will go down. So let me know in the comments down below what you think is more likely to happen. Whose camp are you in? So I want to fill you in on what's being said out there. Bank of America's equity strategy said the bear market is officially over. The S&P 500 has risen 20% above its October low. Goldman Sachs believes that the S&P 500 will likely rally. They raised their year-end target for the S&P 500 to 4,500. But some people are skeptical that a new bull market has started. They're saying that for a new bull market to start, the S&P 500 must hit a new high. And I want to share this other perspective with you. Maybe you heard about this one, maybe you haven't. Some people are saying that we're still in a bull run from 2009. Like this is the longest bull run ever. They're saying that the market has been going down every now and then, but those were not bear markets. Those were corrections in an overall bull market. So for example, the flash crash of 2020 because of COVID. So during that time, was that really a bear market? Or was it a short-term correction in an ongoing bull run since 2009? So you could say the same things. Well, they're saying the same thing about 2022. The S&P 500 was down 20% last year. But was that a bear market or was that just a correction in this ongoing bull run? So that's just another perspective that we're still in a bull market since 2009. However, However, when, however you want to coin a bull market, bear market, I think the better question is, will the stock market go up or down in the next few months? So let's get started with the money printing. I personally believe that this one has the strongest influence on the stock market. If the Federal Reserve prints enough money, it doesn't matter what happens to the economy. The stock market will go up. That's just my belief. You can have GDP plummets, you can have unemployment skyrockets, 
If the Federal Reserve prints enough money, none of that's gonna matter because monetary inflation will drive up the stock market. I personally believe that that's very difficult for anybody to argue with that. The reason why I'm saying that is because we saw this in 2020. GDP fell by 3.5%, unemployment shot up by 13, well, shot up to 13%, and the S&P 500 went up by 18%. That's because the Federal Reserve was printing money like there's no tomorrow. But right now, so the reason why I'm saying that is because you have to compare that to what is going on right now. Right now, the Federal Reserve is performing quantitative tightening. This is the opposite of money printing. So I want you to know that quantitative tightening is not good for the stock markets. Okay, but if you say, well, we haven't seen the stock market go down because of quantitative tightening, that's because in March, the Federal Reserve had to stop, they had to stop it because they had the banks collapsing and then the Federal Reserve had to go back, well, temporarily to printing money again, a lot of money. But now that we have more financial stability with the banks, with the regional banks, the Federal Reserve is pursuing what's a net tightening effect. So they're going back at it. So it's been bumpy, it's been slow, but it's now resumed. So in 2023, they've tightened by about $400 billion. So there's about 7.6 trillion more to go. So they're allowed to tighten, well, they said that their maximum that they're gonna tighten is by 95 billion a month, but they're moving at a speed of 66 billion a month. So they're taking their time. Of course, that's intentional so that they don't freak out the markets. However, the important thing to know is that the stock market is not gonna get an artificial boost from the Federal Reserve printing money like what we've seen in the, in the recent past. So those days are over. Those days are over, at least for now. Okay, I wanna tell you that if you haven't watched the FOMC press conference, I have, a, I have a great video about that. It's an abbreviated video. I would say, especially if you watch it, you're gonna probably say the same thing, that it's almost certain that interest rates will go higher from here on out. And that's not gonna be a good thing for the stock market. Well, it's not gonna be a good thing for the economy either. Okay, so here's how this works. If the economy gets hurt by higher interest rates, then we're most likely gonna fall into recession. A lot of people argue that that's already started, but okay, we get a recession and that's gonna bring down corporate profits. So here's some things to keep in mind when it comes to the economy. Government spending has been propping up GDP. After the debt ceiling, there are now budget caps. So don't expect robust government spending to boost GDP figures in the back half of this year. This is not a surprise either. Unemployment is expected to increase. And I don't want you to forget about student loan, the whole situation with student loans. So student loan payments, they're gonna restart. And that means that people are gonna have less money for discretionary spending. Okay, so if you have the economy degrading, then most likely corporate profits will fall. We are currently in Q2. Q2 corporate profits are expected to fall by 5%. But here's something wild. Analysts are expecting that corporate profits will start shooting up in Q3. That's starting in July. And that corporate profits will begin to surge in Q4. The expectation is that earnings growth will be around 2% year over year in Q3 and 9% year over year growth in Q4. Amazon, Alphabet, Meta and NVIDIA are expected to be the largest contributors to earnings growth for the S&P 500 in Q4 of this year. Whether you believe that's gonna happen or not, that's for you to decide. Basically, analysts are being very optimistic that the economy is gonna have a soft landing and that we're gonna see strong GDP growth in July, August, and September, and then it's gonna be explosive economic growth in Q4. Now, I wanna give you my interpretation of the situation. And I think that a good place to start is the P ratio of the S&P 500. And again, this is just a starting point. So we're currently at 25. From 1900 to 1980, it's 13. From 1981 to 2022, it's 22. I think the more recent years are more relevant. So you probably wanna focus on the past few years. The modern era market average is 20 and we're at 25. So I interpret the situation as we are not in a crazy bubble, but the market 
is certainly not cheap. Now you have to take a look at the macroeconomic environment. So what is coming our way? We have higher interest rates and we have quantitative tightening. So I think that this translates to higher unemployment, lower GDP, and a recession. So this means that companies on the stock market, they're not gonna grow so fast in terms of sales growth. So growth companies, they're not gonna look so hot. In a recession, corporate profits will fall then the P-E ratio will need to be adjusted and it'll be adjusted downwards and the stock market as a whole will fall. And with higher interest rates, there's gonna be a competition for investments between bonds and stocks. So bonds will be looking more attractive with higher interest rates. So I believe that that's how things will play out, but I wanna give you two surprises, one for better and one for worse. So I wanna give you a scenario where there's a positive upside surprise. And in this scenario, it's when inflation just melts away. Inflation comes out better than expected. If this were the case, the Federal Reserve can afford to pivot and cut interest rates sooner rather than later. But you have to remember that the Federal Reserve says that core inflation is sticky. So there's not much improvement. So they need to raise interest rates more and keep interest rates higher for longer to be at below trend growth. But if they actually succeed in bringing down inflation, then they will not have to operate at below trend growth. And that's gonna be really good news for the economy. Now here's the negative scenario. We're talking about a black swan event. This is where something breaks. It could be the commercial real estate market, it could be the regional banks, or it could be the economy just in general. If something breaks, then the Fed pivots will not be enough to save the markets. We know that historically, an emergency and reactionary pivots out of desperation means more downside in the markets. So if you ask me if I'm going bullish, my answer is no, no thank you. I believe that the economy is gonna get worse. I don't think that I'm making any wild claims. Additionally, the money printers are turned off for the time being. So this is all my opinion, and my opinion will change when the time comes, but for me, that time is not right now. So I think we need to see more progress with inflation, especially core inflation. And keep in mind that if you're paying attention to headline inflation, the expectation is that that's gonna go back up. So we need progress in core, and I previously showed you the video clip of Jerome Powell saying that there is no progress. So I'm patiently just gonna wait it out. I'm expecting a wake up call to happen in Q3 of this year. If we look back at the history of stocks in the aftermath of rate hikes, the S&P 500 averages a 13.3% return over a one year period after the final rise in borrowing costs. Further evidence of this is shown by the Russell 1000 Index, which has also shown a positive return on average in the six months period after peak interest rates at an average of 11%. This is in comparison to an average return of 6.3% for all six months periods, indicating additional positive returns compared to normal. Hit that like button to show your support and let us know you appreciate the quality information we provide. Thank you.